Well, hello again. This is Ray from AppliCAD Software. This job was sent to us during the week uh, requesting advice on how we should model it, as it does appear to be quite complicated. Those of us who uh, have been working with the software for a while uh, will know by now that we take the view that a complicated roof is usually a series of simple roofs. And if we break it down uh, with that notion, then uh, most jobs uh, work out uh, to be reasonably straightforward. And this one is no exception. One thing I will highlight is that in this tutorial and others of a more advanced nature, we do assume that you've done the full AppliCAD online training class and so you know the function of most of the commands in the software and those that I'm using. This is not an instructional video, it's uh, in terms of basic training. This is advanced training and does presume you know what you're doing with the software. Okay, this uh, roof plan was a PDF. It's been imported into the software and scaled, so now I'm working at full size. Before we do anything, we want to look at the model and figure uh, the, uh, the plan and try and figure out um, what about the plan makes modeling complicated. In this particular instance, it's to do a lot to do with the fact that we have multiple pictures. We have 612 here. 612, this is a 412 around here, uh, 612 again, back to 412, we've got different overhangs everywhere, and we've also got two barge lines. Now those of you who have sweated over the barge lines used in the training course will know that there are a few things we have to pay attention to with barge lines, and the first thing about barge lines is that the length of the barge line, that is the barge line is the length of the line that goes up the slope of the roof. There's one there and there's one there. The length of those barge lines must be equal if the eave line is to remain at the same height all the way around. So as we work around here there is no other change of eave height so therefore these barge lines must be equal. Now what's curious about this drawing is that it's been drawn incorrectly if line is to be equal. They're not the same length. So we're going to have to make them the same length and draw the uh, the roof as it will be built. Because if we don't do that, well, it can't be modelled. And maybe that's where part of the complication is coming. Alright, the other thing we know about barge lines, is apart from them, they must be equal, is that we must start two points away from a barge line. So I think what we'll do is, uh, where's a good place to start? That's one point away, two points away. All these are more than two points away, so I can start anywhere around here. I think I'll start there. So if, from our main menu, we go to Construct Roof, uh, Track Outline, and OK. Now I've already scaled it, as I've indicated, so I don't need to go there again. We're going to get to go straight into digitizing. I'm digitizing to plus or minus 45 degrees, and I'm going to snap lines to plus or minus one inch. Zoom right in to a corner, pick the corner, left click and start digitizing. Up to the top here, okay, and we get into where the barge lines are starting to happen. Okay, so since they must be both be equal, I'm going to split the difference between the length of this one so it's suggesting it should be about four foot something and and that's less so I think what I'll do I think I'll come down three foot six I'm going to go right half an inch to put my little s step over and then I'm going to go up to the top here and I reckon that should be about uh, up seven feet two inches now don't be afraid to type stuff in. If you have a dimension, use it. You will find it's always easier. When we get across to here, uh, I want to come down five foot six. Because then I've got a 24 inch overhang. I want a three foot six barge line. So five foot six is the right number. Go across half an inch and then go up three foot six and we're back on track. You'll see it's just absolutely spot on. And it's, it's not an accident, it's because 
we investigated the job before we did anything and tried to figure out a strategy for going forward with the job. So I'm not gonna be as 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 fussy about coming around this side. This side's not where the problem is, so I'm just gonna rush around here just to get it in quick. Uh once just go in close and get it right. I hope they're playing some good music in the background while I do this. Some thinking music. And if you get a bit excited and go too far, just step back, right click, step back. That's better. Okay, oh, we've gone too far. Let's step back one more time, and from here we'll go close square. Okie doke. Now, that's um, the perimeter input. Um, now we need to look at the, the other drawings in the plans and we'll see that the majority uh, it's, a, it's a metal roof uh, it's going to be the first story of the roof the majority of the roof is 612 so we'll go 612 and we'll change the bits to the 412 we'll change them to 412 we've done the perimeter so the overhang is zero and the eave height is 12 feet we hit ok there are no uh, cable ends or vertical planes there's well, no overhangs to change because they're, they're doing the perimeter and there's a couple of barge lines. So let's get in there and get our barge lines happening. Select that line. The short line is the line that goes up the slope, so that is the barge line. And on this side, uh, the barge line. Now, notice what happens. We're coming from 12 feet, and we're going up to 13 foot 9, and as we come around here, we want to go back down to 13 foot 9. So if we've got the right line, we'll change to 12 feet. Yes to that bingo so we start at 12 foot eve height we go up to 13 foot 9 and we're back down to 12 feet that's what tells us we've done the right thing with this job so we right click and continue and it builds the roof so this is all built at 612 so now we've got to change the parts of the roof that are 412 to 412 we go modify roof change pitch this part this part this part and we can tell which parts are 412. See how the valley line is in there and the valley line in there? That's telling us which of the roof planes are 412 and which are 612. So hit OK and they're all 412. Enter. Now, it went a bit, a bit haywire in the middle here. Uh, if this was just a single story structure and I needed this, I'd go in and fix those up. But in this particular instance, that will all be cut out later on. And if it's all going to be cut out, I don't have to waste time fixing it. We can just go straight into doing the next part of the roof. Main roof, construct roof, track outline, okay. There's a bit of a wrinkle in there, don't panic, we'll fix that in a minute too. And we're going to digitize the perimeter. Now in this case, we're going to do the walls. And by doing the walls, we can take account of the overhangs and Okay, because the wall line is going to determine where it's cut out. So let's um, let's have a look. We've got two foot overhangs there, three foot overhangs there, three foot, two foot, two foot, three foot, three foot. All right. So I think the best place to start this job, um, starting from the walls. Now this little bit sticking out here in the plan, that's actually what they call a bracket. So it's a, it's a an architectural feature that's. Uh, uh, pretends to be holding up the uh, the eaves so we'll ignore the brackets and work our way around now as we come around here we want these valleys to be the same length so to ensure that they are the same length if we go up two foot six we come down two foot six and continue our way around and in similar situation over here I'm gonna go across there two foot eleven you got to go the other way two foot eleven otherwise we don't get the equal lengths two foot eleven that's the way and down here to the corner same over here we want the sides to be the same length whoops Oops. 
up two foot five. Have you? Th uh, that's not quite right. And if you're not happy, well, don't don't stick with that. Fix it. Come down two foot six. Ne never never accept something that's second rate, because if you do, it'll catch you later on. So always um, always focus on the things that are important. Okay, up here. Now this is another one of those situations where we want those valleys to be the same length to ensure they are the same length. Coming across here, uh, what's that? 15 foot 9 up there. Gonna go right 15 foot 9. And from there, I'm gonna close square. Right, oh, no, this is the second story roof. It's all 612, but I've got mostly 3 foot overhangs, and this is at 24 foot high. So we hit OK, and then we get prompted for gable lengths. Well, there aren't any, and if there are, we can change them later. Um, but there are changes of overhang. So if we come over here, we want that line there to be a 2 foot overhang. And notice the wall line's coming. Let's see if I can see. There we go. Um, and that line's a 2 foot overhang. Notice the outline's changing, that's what we want to see. Okay, that's a two-foot overhang. What's over here? That's all three. Down here we've got a couple of two-foot overhangs. So that's a two-foot overhang. And that one. And that one. Right, that looks pretty cool. Okay, right-click on there and continue. And it builds the roof. So that's all pretty good. Um, I'm happy with that. Overhangs all, it all looks exactly what's been drawn, so we're, we're, we're making good progress here, I would say. Okay, so what we need to do now is get rid of all this stuff in the middle, and we go to modify roof cutout. We're going to auto track the cutout. So auto track follows the wall line of the second story. We're going to select the story to cut out, and we're going to delete the internal pieces. We hit OK, select the walls, and we're going to select the first story, hit OK, bam. Well, that's, wow, that's pretty good. Now we only have to fix this little thing in here. So we go to the isometric view and think about what's happened. So that's, that's done a bit of a dog leg in there and it's not supposed to have done that. How do we fix it? Well, we use our smart lines functions. And as I said right at the start, I'm assuming you've done the training and you know what I'm talking about when I start talking about smart lines. And if you haven't done the training, get on and do it. Righto, so we've got to get rid of that little dog leg in there. So we're going to copy a line that's straight. Whoops, go to construct roof smart lines, uh, copy the line, and we're going to copy that even line, snap it into there. Now, in normal circumstances, that and that would intersect. So they do, and we put a plane in. Okay, put the plane back in straight away and then you know you're on the right track. The next thing we want to do is put a corner in where that line hits that line. Then put that plane in. Actually wrong one. Sorry, start again. <laughs> okay, can't get good help. Righto. We want no not that one, that one put that back there what we really want we want that line to trim with that line that's more like it and put that plane back in sorry about that had a brain fart right and right oh so before we get too far in let's delete all the rubbish lines that's I've got a bit excited with that one that's a rubbish line that's a rubbish line that's a rubbish line. Get rid of the rubbish lines. Right up. We now have a function here where we can create an intersection between two planes, between that one and that one. And that's going to be a valley. That shows us where the valley line goes. So we can now rebuild the geometry, take into account of that line and make sure it's correct. So I know I put all those planes in, I'm going to take them out again. <laughs> yes, I know what you're saying. Um, okay, we want that to trim to that. 
we want that to trim to that. Righto, put that plane back in. It's all about getting the correct geometry going. And if you've got the correct geometry going, well then it, it'll all work. And if it doesn't, so now we make a corner out of uh, that one and that one. We copy that line and put it into there and make a corner between that one and that one. Put that plane back in and that fixed that little mess that um, we didn't want it to be a mess but the software didn't quite know what to do and made it up and made it up incorrectly. That's now correct. We look at the top view and you'll see that we've got a 412 here, 612 there and the valley's in the right place and that's ever so slightly out as well and for the same reason because I don't think it was drawn correctly the guy who drew it didn't fully understand what he was doing okay so um, if um, that's about it that's how we would do that job now I use a, a figure there of three foot six and you'll notice that they they both go ever so slightly up the roof too high so maybe we should have used um, an, a, a barge line of say three foot two or something if it's a fuss for us, we can go back and fix it. Otherwise, that's the process, and I'm more fussed about the process just now than anything else. Now, in the event that that does bother you, and for those interested to know how to uh, easily fix it, let's go ahead and do that. What we want to know first of all is what the eve height is of that presently. We go to check, verify, and verify the eve line. And that's currently at 13 foot 9. So if we wanted that valley line to move back, we'd have to make it say 13 foot 6, is my guess. So drop it down 3 inches. And we can do that without having to redo the entire roof all over again. We just go to our modify roof function and uh, change the eave height of those three planes. And you'll see what happens. I'll make it 13 foot 6. And, and that's created a bit of a mess for us to clean up. But it's not a big deal. You'll see it takes no time at all. Um, the, this part of the roof is dropped down, but then we have to mess with the rest of this geometry and to clean that up. And we just use our smart lines functions. That's what smart lines are for. Uh, make the necessary small changes. So what's going to change if we do that? Uh, let's go to smart lines, trim to a corner. Zoom in a bit so you can see what's going on. That uh, end wall flashing will have to connect with that, and this end wall flashing will connect to that, and that sets the position of all the other lines. So we're going to move that valley, snap it into there, move that valley and snap it into there, and then that's got to make a connection. Whoops, sorry, um, that's got to make a connection with that valley has to make a connection with, with that. That valley makes a connection with that. Now we've got two planes back, so let's put them in. And then it locks those planes in place. Whoops, wrong one. <laughs> uh, don't say no, say yes. Uh, now I'm using my um, mouse buttons to uh, say yes, no, cancel. That's equivalent to left, middle and right. So use that line, yes put a plane in. So that locks those planes in. So now all we have to do is put the rest of the geometry where it belongs. Get rid of the stuff that's not required anymore. That's not required anymore. And we now have to uh, whoops, move. Move that line down to there. Move that line down to there. And trim them to a corner. Trim that to that. Trim that to that. Put the planes back. Fixed. So as you can see, not a big deal. Um, in fact, that was drawn pretty well, wasn't it? <laughs> Okay, so 
If you don't have the right information, it's not the end of the world. Hopefully that helps uh, finish this job and with a few other little tips as well while we're at it. Uh, don't get bogged down, uh, just think it through, concentrate on the geometry and you'll always get the results you want. Well I hope that helps and I uh, look forward to speaking to you on the next video. Bye for now.